Heidi ho there, friends and neighbors, Bobby here today. Hey friends, today we're going to try to bring this old ax back to life. This is actually the very first ax that I ever purchased myself. I, I got it when I was about 20 years old. Um, I was living in a town not far from here that had uh, a hurricane come through, Hurricane Hugo. You may have heard me talk about that before. But anyway, I uh, had some trees fall in my yard and this is one of the purchases that I made at that time when I was a young 20 year old man. But somehow over the years, this happened to it, okay? This handle come apart from this ax. But I got to looking at this handle and it's actually in still, still pretty good shape, okay? It's not beat up from uh, over striking. So I th I'm gonna um, see if I can repair this guy. So stay tuned and let's get this done. Okay, first thing we'll do here, I'm gonna try to purdy up this handle just a little bit, but I don't wanna make it look too purdy because I want some of the old age uh, still on this handle, okay? The old dirt from 30 years ago. What I've done, I've taken this little draw knife here, and in this area, I've actually started raking it across here, getting some of this old black mildewy looking stuff off of here, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and continue on this end with that same procedure. And we're going to try just try to get it looking like this right here, okay? We're going to leave a little bit of that darkness and all them cracks and stuff. And uh, that'll just add to the character of this axe handle, okay? So as you can see, we're just going to rake it across here with the blade backwards. And we're just going to try to clean this up a little bit. And afterwards, after we spend a little time going over every square inch of this thing. We will then run the sander over it, just kind of smooth it out a little bit. And then we'll show you what we do next. Stay tuned. Bring that camera over here, I'll show you one time where the, looks like um, Sammy the dog actually has chewed on this at one time or another. So, I guess it was Sammy, could have been another dog, I don't know. Okay folks, up here on the top of the uh, axe handle here where the kerf is, the old uh, wood wedge is still stuck down in here. I don't see any metal wedges. If I remember correctly, I think this thing probably had like epoxy at the very top, but that's long since gone. But I I'm gonna try to take a screwdriver and see if I can just try to get this old wedge kind of out of here. I'm gonna tap on it a little bit. See if I can get it to move any, and if not, we'll just take a saw blade and saw it out of there. I'm going to play with it a little bit. There we go. Looks like we got it to move some right there. That's part of it. There's another part of it. Let's see. Let's screw that bit. So tap on a little bit more. There we go. Looks like we're going to get a good bit of that wedge out of there. We're going to keep in mind the thickness of that wedge when we go to make our new wedge to go in here. Hopefully we can get it about, get it a little thicker than that one. I'm going to run just a hacksaw blade through here first, see if I can get that to go all the way down. I think there might be more wood stuck down in there. Let's see if we can get that to go down in there first. And then we got a, another saw blade that we might uh, try to work in there a little bit larger. 
Okay, folks, we got the hacksaw blade to go all the way to the bottom of this kerf. Okay, let's see if we can get this other. We got a, like an old uh, back saw here is what we got. Uh, I've had this since I was a kid. I think my dad got me this when I was a little boy. Let's see how we can just get it to cut all the way down to the bottom of the kerf. Okay, there we are, guys. So we are cleaned out. Okay, let's just get our axe head here right quick. Let's see, it goes this away. See if we can get it to go back on here right quick with all that going. Okay, yes, yeah, a little snug right now. But we will work on that and I'm gonna go ahead and finish working on this handle a little bit. And then we're gonna clean this thing up a little bit. I think I'm gonna leave the original paint on here, but I'm gonna put me another little edge on here and we're gonna sharpen it up, make it look, make it uh, function a little bit better. And we'll keep working on this guys, stay tuned. Okay, I went ahead and got my little orbital sander here, folks. I'm gonna go ahead and sand this handle like I want it. Put the smoothness that I want on. I think we're gonna go with, with like uh, the 60 right quick. And then we're going to finish it with some 220. And then we'll work on uh, fitting the head on this thing. One thing I did notice on the head, on the uh, axe head, I guess at some point this thing had come off. And I guess I grabbed it and just threw it back on there. And I, probably, and I threw it on there upside down. And it looks like I beat on it with a hammer. And it had to be me. Uh, because this is on the bottom side of the axe head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna file this and straighten this up just a little bit to where our um, handle will fit better, okay? We'll work on that here in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and sand this sucker up. switched the sander over to a piece of 220 we went over everything and kind of smoothed out everything notice that i'm leaving some of that old uh look in there i'm not trying to sand out every little uh piece of dirt on this thing i just want to get the majority of it i radius up where the dog had been chewing on the handle but i've still left some of the bite marks and stuff in there just enough to where you don't catch your hand on it and catch a splinter or anything so let's go over with some 220, and then we'll, then that'll be about, hang on, let me finish talking before I cut the sander on. We'll go ahead and uh, finish cleaning this up, and then we'll move on to fitting the head. folks that's kind of the way I want it as you can see we still got a little bit of the dirty the dirty dirt that has been on this thing for the last 30 something years we still got some of the bite marks down in here from Sammy some worn areas some of that uh, worn dirty look down in here and folks when we soak this down with linseed oil it's gonna really just highlight all that stuff it's gonna look really cool okay and I'm thinking about, I got a wood burning kit around here that my daughter wanted me to purchase because she was doing some wood burning about a year ago. I can't remember where that thing is. And uh, I might 
burn Hugo into this thing since this thing was purchased for the Hurricane Hugo back in the day. So anyway, let's move on and we'll start working on this axe head. All right, folks, I was telling you that there were some hammer marks on the bottom side of this uh, axe and it's probably me doing that many years ago, putting it on upside down, not knowing any better. So I'm gonna take this file and I'm gonna try to chamfer that edge to where we can get the um, handle fitting in here properly. So I'm gonna work on this for a little bit. Okay, folks, I ran that file in there. I think I straightened up that little edge there and I think I got it uh, back like it should be. Now, let me, let me just tell you folks something right quick. Um, I'm gonna try to test fit this thing, but on an ax head, typically the top of the ax, this eye opening is larger than the opening down here. And I can just physically look at that and tell that, you know, this looks wider up here. And the reason for that is when you fit your ax in there, you drive your wedge in here, and then you got like a bigger area up here. That's what keeps the ax head from slinging off of the ax, okay? So anyway, make sure you get your ax turned the correct way. Because if you put it on this way, the wrong way, hang on. If you put it on this way, you'll see that you got all kinds of slop right there. And if you end up putting it on that way and driving a wedge into it or whatever, it's not going to do very well. It's not going to last long. So let's just see what this fits like now. So I'm just going to smack this on up. I got a piece of firewood in here that I'm, instead of the concrete floor, I'm just hitting it on that so I don't, hopefully don't mess up my handle. Okay, we smacked that down on there, and as you can see, we're still not even out of the top here yet. I wanna actually have this thing coming out probably about a quarter inch or so, uh, hopefully. But anyway, down here, we're actually being stopped here on the edges. You can see where it's starting to curl, but look here, it's not even touching back here, okay? And I'm sure that this ax probably not even touching right there, okay? So this ax head, and look at there, it's all curled up right there, so we're gonna take some material off of that and actually fit this thing a lot further down on this axe handle than it ever has been. It wasn't really probably fitted that well from the factory because it's just kind of a cheap axe that I picked up at a home improvement store back then. But uh, we're gonna see if we can get it fitting better on this original axe head. Okay, I'm gonna drive this thing out of here. I'm just taking a big old um, ch um, punch here and I'm just going to flip it upside down. Tap. Tap our handle out of here. Like so. And don't drop this on your foot. You might cut your toe off. Be careful. Might be a good idea to have some steel toe tennis shoes on. <laughs> All right. As you can see, look here. We got a little bit of curl right there. But we got nothing down here, nothing over here. As I showed you, we got curl right here. So we need to work on these areas and, gr and rasp this down some and bring this ax head on down here to where we can get everything fit nicely all the way around. Okay, the camera person just said to me, she said, so you don't want any curl. No, that's not it, but I do want curl all the way around. See, we got the little curl right here, but we got nothing going on down here. Nothing going on over here. So we want to rasp this and grind this down. Take material off of the current areas that we have the uh, curl and keep fitting this ax head down here further until we get curl all the way around, until we get touching all the way around. You understand that? Yeah. Okay, camera person. Okay, now I flip the axe head upside down or around, and down here we don't, we don't have any curl, but right here we got big old strong lip of curl right there. So we're gonna grind this, we're gonna work on grinding this down. 
All right, camera person, you got to get the camera a little, give me a little room here now. <laughs> camera person is actually Mint Hill Teen, everybody. Y'all all know her. But tonight, she's just camera person. All righty, so we're going to keep on working on this. Test fit. So let's go ahead and put the head on there. See how far down we can get this time. Well, it's down a little bit further. It's still not enough. As you can tell, we still got a big gap here. Okay. And we're starting to get a little closer down here on this end. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it off and keep working on it. Okay guys, that's test fit number two. Look here, we got about a quarter inch sticking out up here on top, or three sixteenths. But we're still curling it right there in the middle really hard, okay? So we know we gotta take meat off in this area right in here. We still have nothing here on the edge, so we gotta bring it down a good bit if we're ever gonna get that, which means we're gonna have to cut the curve deeper in this ax head to actually get it on here right. So we still got a lot of work to do and I'll check back with you in a little bit. Okay folks, hey, we're still working on this thing and we've actually got this head to go down on here quite a bit further than it ever did before from the factory. And I'm actually cutting this uh, kerf a little deeper. Your kerf is uh, supposed to be about two thirds down the thickness of the, of the ax or the width of the ax, okay? So I'm just going to, I'm bringing it down with a hacksaw first because my hacksaw blade actually cuts a little bit better than my other old saw that I've had since I was a kid. So we're going to, but this one does take out a little bit wider, wider uh, gap. So we're going to run this down in here too. Okay. That right there has improved that a little bit. Notice, folks, I'm wearing gloves now because a while ago I was pulling this thing apart and I accidentally cut myself with this axe head. So definitely wear some glo leather gloves on your hands when you are messing with sharp tools, okay? And it wouldn't be a bad idea to actually have some steel toe shoes on as well. Okay, so anyway, we are going to um, actually test fit this thing one more time and grind on it a little bit more. Okay guys, I think I got this thing fitting about the best I can. If you notice, we got curl all the way across here. We have got curl all the way across here. We got one little spot right there where it ain't fitting quite right. But I think I might knock it down a little further. Around here on the back, we're still not 100% touching, but we're a lot closer. I'm afraid I'm gonna run out of room here if I keep driving it down because I don't think it's going to get much bigger between here and here. So uh, this could be about the best. It's definitely going to be a lot better than it was when it was a brand new axe. So, because uh, I don't think it took very long for it to actually get loose, if I remember correctly. Up here, you can see we were way up here. Now we got this much sticking out now when we test fit. And this line right here is a line that I'm going to cut. And that's going to leave us about a quarter inch or more above um, the top of the axe head and we'll install our um, wedge from that point. So let me get that cut and we'll, let's get it together. All right guys, I got in a hurry and I didn't even film uh, driving the wedge in, but the wedge is driven in, okay? Put glue on both sides of the wooden, wooden wedge, drove it in there and as you can see, well, you can actually look and see that it's kind of like swollen up at the top. You see there? You know, we're going to leave it sticking out like that right there because that just adds to the extra um, ability for the axe head to stay on here when that top is all swollen out like that. I'm debating whether or not I'm going to put a metal wedge in it or not. I'm going to let it sit overnight, let the glue dry real good. I'll radius the top a little bit and then we'll clean this axe head up a little bit. We'll run the sander back over the handle 
and put a little bit of the um, boiled, lean, boiled linseed oil on there. And we'll see what it looks like when it's finished. Stay tuned. Okay, friends. Hey, we're back again, like on the second day of actually working on this, but it's been like a week later. Nathaniel's out here filming today. Bring the camera on over, Nathaniel. I think it's the first time you've seen this. Okay, so we got our ax, we got it fitted, we got it wedged, we glued the wedge, we shoved everything in there. You guys already know that, you just watched me do it. So now we gotta figure out what we wanna do with this head, okay? Notice how it still has some of the original black paint on it from 1989 when I purchased it. I think I wanna leave that there. It's got some mud here. I think one time I was chopping at some roots with this thing or something. So, um, we're gonna we're gonna get all this mud off of here. We're gonna get some of this rust off. We might even leave a little bit of the rust, and we're gonna radius this edge here. You know this because um, I cut this off in the miter saw. We're gonna sand on this, and we're gonna get all this cleaned up really good. We're gonna put just a quick little edge on it. We're not gonna worry about getting it super sharp because I've already cut myself on it once, guys. I don't want to cut myself again. But uh, so we're gonna do that. And then we're going to soak this baby in some boiled linseed oil. So stay tuned while we get her done. Okay, I put a piece of 220 grit on my sander here. And we're just going to go ahead and start sanding and see what happens. camera a little closer to this here all right folks as you can see here i ran the sander over here with some 220 we left a little bit of the rust we've left some of the paint actually that paint just kind of started really coming off there but i left a little bit of it i want some of that original black paint on there so now we're going to flip it over okay if i can without losing my little blocks of wood here i'm going to do the same thing to this side all right so we're just going to run the sander over it Get the mud off of there, get a little bit of the paint off of there, and see what it looks like. Okay, folks, I think I got this axe kind of like I want it. You know, I got my rust on there. I got a little bit of the old original paint on there. And what I'm going to do is take the side grinder with a piece of 50 grit, and I'm just going to quickly run across here to kind of get this shape, any burrs or anything off of here, and just kind of get this angle. I'm going to pretty much follow the angle that's already there. We'll do that to both sides. I'm going to come over here where I've had a couple strikes with using this as a hammer when you're not supposed to. And I'm going to put just a slight little angle on that because it'll knock it out really quick on both sides. And then we'll continue on after that. Okay, folks we just real quickly just kind of straightened up that edge there okay now that's not a I mean that does feel kind of sharp right there but it's kind of a raggedy edge now from this point we can go ahead and file this real nicely and then we could hone it we can make it as sharp as we wanted to but for right now I'm just gonna leave it just like that because we're gonna work on shaping all this and go ahead and get our um, handle soaked with that linseed oil so stay tuned
is, I think I'm about finished here. As you notice, I just took the sander and I kind of radius everything up here, sticking out of the top of the ax and uh, just to kind of make it look a little nicer. If you look down this thing, let's see if I can get back here with Nathaniel. And you look there, you can see, Nathaniel, you stay where you're at. Bring the camera back up a little bit, up a little bit right there, buddy. I'm trying to show them something. You can see that the top of that wood sticking out of there is swollen up wider than the opening of that eye. I don't think I would even have to put a metal wedge in here, okay? I'm not going to right now. We're going to leave it like it is, okay? So let's uh, bring this back over to the vise. I'm going to uh, run one more little quick sanding over the whole thing with some 220, and then we are going to lube her up with some linseed oil and call this ax finished. <laughs> pour a little dab in this old antique piece of milk glass that I think I got at an auction one time. We're just going to leave some of it right in there. Maybe I need a little bit bigger bowl. I think I might dab some off of there with this rag that we're sacrificing for this today. Pour some on there. Try not to get it all over me. Need to be a pair of gloves is what I need, like some of them uh, latex gloves or something. All right, anyway, I'm gonna bring my little dish with me here with some with some extra. We're gonna go on over here to the uh, handle. Let me lay my dish down. Now watch this, guys. Now remember, bring it over and over here closer to the thing where they can see. Look, I didn't sand everything out of there, okay? You see the dark stuff that's deep in the grain? That's just some of the old dirt off of my hands and mildew and whatever over the years. Remember there was some teeth markets and a dog, a dog chewed on the end of it evidently at one time, probably Sammy. And uh, so I'm just leaving some of that oldness on there. Now watch what happens, guys. Look at there. Look at there. Look how pretty that looks, Nathaniel, when you do that. See there? Kind of darkens it up. So what we want to do and we're gonna keep wiping this down on here, guys. You don't you don't have to watch all this. We'll cut the camera off. But I'm gonna go ahead and coat this thing a couple times with this linseed oil, covering every square inch of it, okay? And I'm also gonna uh, make sure I cover it up here really good on top, okay? And any of that oil that soaks down into that wood and makes that swell up even more, that's just gonna make our ax head stay on there even better. Right, Nathaniel? Mm -hmm. So guys, we're gonna keep working. We're actually gonna wipe our ax down with this stuff too, okay? Look at there, look what it does to there, okay? We're just gonna wipe this sucker down. Every, We'll just keep this thing always wiped down good and uh, with our linseed oil. And hopefully this sucker here will be around for another 30 years. It's already 30 years old. Maybe it'll be around for another 30 years. Guys, this is really looking good. This is really fun putting this on here. That is going to just be awesome. We have made this old ax great again. Now, like I said, I bought this thing at a home improvement store. It's got the profile for a chopping ax, okay? So it's not, it's, I already know it's not a very good splitting ax, okay? I learned that a long time ago. But I know we've made this better, because I remember I don't even think I use this thing. Yeah, bring the camera up here so they can see me while I'm talking. 
I don't even think I used this too much before the head actually got loosened up from the handle. And you saw what I had to do to get this thing fitting right. From the factory, I do remember that it was just fitted in there and it had like that epoxy poured in there. So evidently, some of these companies, they just shove an ax head or a handle into an ax head. They don't care if it fits. They just pour all that hot that epoxy in there to fill up all the voids and hope for the best. And I, I don't remember it actually staying on there very long. So hopefully now it's going to stay on here a while. We're going to get to use it for another 30 years, maybe 50 years. Maybe Nathaniel will end up giving this one to his kids. What do you think, Nathaniel? Hello? You better talk. Nathaniel has a problem talking when he's the cameraman. How come you can't speak? They can hear you. Say something. He's shaking his head. All right. I'm going to keep on working on this. Folks, as you can see, I am being very generous with this linseed oil, okay? And I'm just letting it soak in as much as it can right up here on top, okay? I'm just going to let that soak in. And then, of course, we're wiping down the axe head. Look at there, guys. See there, we got some, some pretty shiny metal from us just sanding it. We've got some paint still on it. We got some hammer marks that are 30 years old. And look at there, look at there. Don't that look cool? A little bit of rust, a little bit of shiny metal, a little bit of black paint. It just looks old, I like it. That's what we want, no more. I was thinking about like repainting the whole thing, but nah, I like it better like this. I want it to show its age. Okay guys, hey, we are, we brought the ax outside. We want to let you see what it looks like in the light. See all the old stuff still in there? I like that, I'm just leaving all that there. All them old memories. Okay, like I told you guys, this thing was around during Hurricane Hugo was the reason I bought this bad boy. Let's go out here in the backyard. We got some pine trees down. Let's go see if we can chop some limbs off of it. Hey guys, we got these pine trees down in our backyard. Let's just see how this works. Taking some limbs off here. There we go. What about this one here? There we go. There we go. She's working pretty good, folks. Bring it around, around here, okay? Mm. <clears throat> Some more small limbs. Get out of here. Ooh. I almost hit you with a limb. <laughs> you, you almost hit my toe. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Let's see if we can take this one out. You want to? No, let's try this one first. Come on over here around this way, thing. Hey, that's pretty pretty efficient there folks. Things cutting pretty good. I like it. I like my old axe. I'm not an axeman, friends and neighbors. Don't be critiquing my style over there. But uh hopefully you like my old axe here. I think I'm gonna enjoy this thing again. It's been a long time since I've been able to actually use it. That head's been loose for many, many years. Things just been sitting around in the shop. But we made it great again. Thanks for stopping by. Ah, I got my whoo, heart rate up a little bit out here chopping some wood. Friends, get you an ax, get you some gloves, get you some steel toe boots. Bring the camera down so they can see. You want some steel toe boots on, okay? Get out in your backyard and chop some trees. You want some exercise? Chop some trees. All right, friends, have a wonderful day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We will see you next time. Take care.